Section 7.3 is essentially the same thing as Section 7.2, only we're working with quantitative data instead of categorical data. In these problems, we're writing confidence intervals to estimate the mean of a population rather than the proportion of a population. So the following things are going to change for these problems. The point est estimate changes from a p hat to the sample mean x bar. Standard deviation, instead of radical pq over n, is now sigma over radical n. And when we write our conclusion, the statement that goes, we are 95% confident that dot, 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 instead of writing about the true proportion, we're now writing about the true mean of the population. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Example one, people have died in boat and aircraft accidents because an obsolete estimate of the mean weight of men was used. In recent decades, the mean weight of men has increased considerably, so we need to update our estimate of the mean so that boats, aircraft, elevators, etc., do not become dangerously overloaded. We have a sample of 40 men, and that sample was found to have an X bar or a sample mean of 172.55. Research from several other sources suggests that the standard deviation for all men is 26 pounds. Part A, find the best point estimate for the mean weight for the population of all men. Knowing nothing else about the population, our best point estimate is whatever the sample result was. And in this case, the sample result was 172.55 pounds. Okay, X bar is the result of a sample. If we're talking about the whole population of all men, that's a really horrible mu. It should look like this, mu. Okay, find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Sigma over radical n is the equation. Okay, this is the standard deviation of the population and it tells us the standard deviation of weights of all men is 26 pounds. Divide that by radical 40 and we get 4.11. This is the same equation that we used when we were talking about taking a sample and finding a z-score for the average weight of 40 men, for example. Critical z-score for a 99% confidence interval. This is the same thing we did in the last section. 99% cut out of the middle, leaves 1% for those two red tails there. It's split evenly. Now we look up in our z-table, 0.995, everything to the left of that line and we get 2.575. Margin of error is the z-score times our standard deviation. And in this case, it's 2.575 times that 4.11. Our margin of error is 10.59 pounds. The interval always starts with our point estimate, in this case, the sample mean, and we add and subtract the margin of error. So 172.55, plus minus that 10.59 gives us this interval. Interpret the 99% confidence interval. We are 99% confident that the true mean weight of men lies between 161.96 pounds and 183.14 pounds. What does this suggest about the mean weight of 166.3 pounds that was used back in 1960? Well, this is still a plausible value because that is within the range of the confidence interval that we just calculated. Okay, so since it's in that interval, it's possible that it's still the same. Uh, however, we'd really want to collect more data to make this interval thinner and see if it remains in the interval or moves to the outside. Next example, a sample of 54 bears has a mean weight of 182.9 pounds. Assuming that sigma is known to be 121.8 pounds, find a 90% confidence interval estimate of the mean of the population of all such bare weights. Standard deviation, sigma over radical n. It tells us here that sigma equals 121.8. Divide that by square root of the sample size. Sample size is 54 bears. So we get a standard deviation for the sampling distribution of 16.57. Critical z-score for 90%, 90% cut out of the middle, 5% in both of those tails, look up 95% in the middle of our z-table, and we get 1.645. Margin of error is going to be this z-score times this standard, standard deviation, and we get 27.26.
the interval is the point estimate from our sample plus and minus that margin of error 155.64 to 210.16 we are 90 percent confident that the true mean weight of all bears lies between 155.64 and 210.16 pounds sometimes we'll be asked to work backwards and find a sample size that's required to get a desired margin of error we'll need these three things a critical z-score for whatever confidence level we're working with for example 95 percent the margin of error that we're looking to get and the standard deviation of the population for example an economist wants to estimate the mean income for the first year of work for college graduates who have taken a statistics course how many such incomes must be found if we want to be 95 percent confident that the sample mean is within 500 dollars and then it says down at the bottom here that sigma equals 62.50. So the key question, how many such incomes is asking us, what's the sample size that we need? It's telling us we need a 95% confidence interval and we want it within 500, okay? This is the thing that's most difficult to identify. Within 500 is the margin of error. So basically we are gonna get a sample result, an average, okay? And we're gonna move out $500 above that and below that, that's our margin of error. We want our true population mean to be in that range. Okay, 95% confidence, we get our z-score from this, and this should start to get more and more familiar. 95% would have a z-score of 1.96. So we plug everything in, 1.96 times 6250, divide by 500, we can simplify this fraction we get 24.5, square that, and we get 600.25. This number should always be rounded up. It doesn't matter that it's closer to 600. Our answer for this problem is 601. Let's do another. IQ tests are typically designed so that the mean is 100 and standard deviation is 15. That's one of the things we'll need. Assume that we wanna estimate the mean IQ score for the population of statistics students. How many, here's our question, What's our sample size? So how many statistics students must be randomly selected for IQ tests if we want 99% confidence that the sample mean is within three IQ points? Okay, margin of error, 99% confidence, 2.575 is our z-score. We would look that up just like we did the other ones. This is a seven here, 2.575. And then it tells us up there that the standard deviation is 15 plug them all in, simplify our fraction, square it, and always round this up 166. Two more other questions just to make sure we're clear on what we're actually finding when we create a confidence interval. So in this example, a farmer is interested in increasing the crop yield of his tomato plants from the current average of eight pounds per plant. After season, season using a new fertilizer, a 99% confidence interval for the mean crop yield per plant is 7.62 to 10.39. Does this provide evidence that the fertilizer has helped increase the average crop yield? So has this fertilizer increased it above eight pounds based on this interval? So the key thing to identify is eight is right in the middle or not right in the middle, but it's in between those two numbers, okay? So in other words, it's possible that the average yield from these plants is only 7.62, in which case this fertilizer actually made it worse, okay? It's also possible it made it much better. The key thing being, we really don't know. So there's not evidence that this has made it better. Eight pounds is within the interval. It's possible that the average yield per plant is as low as 7.62 pounds. Compare that with example six, the farmer from the example above decides to use a lower 90% confidence level. When we lower the confidence level, our interval is gonna get thinner. It's thinner because we're not as confident that the true population mean is within those two numbers. So his new interval is 8.18 to 9.75. Would this change our conclusion? So based on this interval, does it look like the fertilizer is effective? Has it raised the average uh, yield per plant. Okay, so based on this interval, yes, the entire range of values is above eight. Eight is below all of these. 
Okay, the lowest possible average yield that we believe the plants can be producing is 8.18 pounds. That's higher than eight, as is everything else in this interval. Okay, so the interval provides evidence that the fertilizer has helped increase the yield.